Hello and welcome to the Sharp 600, brought to you by Covers.com and presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. I'm Jason Logan, he's Todd Furman, and boy do we hate garbage time touchdowns. <laughs> Just as much as anyone. Uh, we, we both had unders in week 10. You had Colts and Bills, I had Titans and Bolts. Everything was looking like it was going to go according to plan. However, in the final minute, they score meaningless touchdowns. It pushes the final score over those totals. Uh, I also feel some sympathy for Debo Samuel as well, too, because I had San Francisco uh, minus five. So I could see where his frustrations come from. Todd, i, I got to ask you, we've been doing this for a while, dear. Uh, when it comes to these loses, do they, do they, these losses like that, do they sting a little more knowing that you had, you know, you had the handicap right, but it just, you know, that twist of fate, or would you rather just have been, had your bet squashed? Well, you know, fortunately, fortunately for me, Jason, I had both ends of the spectrum. I had a bet that had no chance with the New York Jets that we gave out on this very fine program and then had that heartbreaking loss uh, with the total. And honestly, I know sometimes it's easier to stomach those games where you're just dead wrong, mm. but I think it's more a flawed process than anything else. And anyone who's been in this racket, whether as a recreational better or a professional, you're going to have some of those opportunities where you handicap a game perfectly and the best laid plans don't come to fruition. And mm. lo and behold, that's what unfolded there much like your Chargers and Titans, but I'll make the case that your beat you suffered in that 49ers Bucks game was even worse because Jake Moody couldn't kick a field goal to save his life. And they had multiple opportunities to get outside the number to go up by six. So mm -hmm. just one of those weekends, you kind of wash your hands from it. Uh, and like we talk about all the time on this fine program, it's the mental gymnastics of being a sports <laughs> better that's yes. oftentimes harder to overcome than the handicapping and the financial sure. windfall or lack thereof. That, that comes with it. I, I would say the mental gymnastics is kind of why we do this thing sometimes too, right? Like that's that's the, that's the whole point of it. Sure, you want to make money, but you're you're there to make it a little more interesting. And Gluttons those for those, punishment, and those for ones, punishment you know, is what I'll call us. Yeah, the sweat, the excitement. That's you know that's at the core of it. So I, I would say I I'll, I'll sit through one of those excruciating losses rather than just have it blown out of the water early on. Before we dig into the week eleven slate and try to try to up our luck here. Uh, we ask that if you've been listening or watching to the Sharp 600 podcast, please take a moment, rate and review, subscribe, like, do all those things. It helps us spread the good word and talk to more sports bettors like yourself. All right. So bad luck. We'll shake out that uh, the bad luck. And let's have 600 seconds on the clock. You look at the standings, and it is easy to decipher the good teams from the bad teams. But when you start throwing point spreads into the mix, it, you're singing a different song here, Todd. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shout out a name, and you tell me whether they're a good team or a bad team. But also, are they going to be a good bet or a bad bet going forward? So let's start. They play Thursday night, Philadelphia Eagles. I think they're going to be a bad bet going forward. I have some real concerns about this team and some of their offensive consistency. I don't love what I've seen from Jalen Hurts. The offense still feels a bit clunky. And defensively, yes, they're progressing. But to the point I want to lay big numbers with them, like they're going to be priced going forward, I'm going to say a bad bet. Oh, I'm going to say they're a good team and could be a good bet. I, I kind of like the way their offense is putting up some points. Now they have played some weak defenses. But if you look at the road ahead, there's more weak defenses. The kind of the toughest test is going to be the Steelers in week 15. And you mentioned the defense starting to pick up on the Fangio scheme. We're going to talk about this defense in this team a little later to come. But I think the Eagles hold some good bet value. All right, let's go to let's go way to the bottom here. Cleveland Browns, are they a good bet, bad bet, bad team? So this comes with a contingency. They become a bad bet if Dorian Thompson Robinson gets an opportunity to be their starting quarterback because mm -hmm. I think it'll limit their offensive upside. But if Jameis Winston is out there, despite the mercurial nature of his performances, I think they're a good bet. I think people have written this team off, but you still have a lot of boxes you can check. Nick Chubb's getting healthier. The offense has shown a pulse in the passing game. And defensively, as long as they're not besieged by injuries, I think they'll be fine. I think Cleveland, despite their record, will be a good bet. Yeah, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on bad team, but good bet. Because the market perception on the Browns is it's usually always crap, and it's really crap still. But... Uh, like you said, Nick Chubb coming back. This is a team that can run the football and then very, very disruptive defense can make some plays and get after the quarterback. They're going to be on the road coming up here quite a bit. So there's going to be lots of points to play with. I, I think that the Browns can be a good bet. Let's go to the New England Patriots. Are they going to be a bad bet, a good bet? They've been a good bet recently. You know, it's interesting because we talk all the time about bad teams that are out there fighting, showing that effort and intensity. And I like what I've seen from Drake May at the quarterback position. 
So I think there's going to be some opportunity and upside to back the Patriots as we come down the stretch. I wouldn't run to bet them this week against the Rams, uh, but I actually like what I've seen from Drake May, and the defense, in my opinion, has shown some signs of improvement. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this is as good as it gets. I think they're going to be a bad bet. They've, they've covered in three straight heading into this game with the Rams. But if you look at their schedule, they have seven games left, all seven of those games against teams that are playoff contenders and pushing for a postseason spot. So they're, they're going to pile on. I think we're going to get more tape on Drake May. Maybe hit some you know, those, those uh, rookie wall coming up as well, too. I don't know if I truly trust New England. I think they're going to get a ton of points, but I don't know if I truly trust them to cover those spreads. Let's go to, this is one of the more difficult teams out there to figure out, the San Francisco 49ers. Are they a good team? Are they a bad bet? Are they a good bet? (laughs) That's a great question, and we'll have more on this team a little later in the show. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the 49ers are somewhat overvalued. Everyone loves the big, flashy names that we've seen at the offensive skill positions. Jawan Jennings coming back, Christian McCaffrey. We saw the big contract extension Mm -hmm. to Diamador Lenore. Dre Greenlaw is eventually going to be out there. But this doesn't feel like a team that's clicking on all cylinders and the way they're being priced. They may win games, but in my opinion, they're still a bad bet. And I'm going to have to stick to that with some of the schedule congestion they have coming up. Yeah, I I think I think so, too. It's just not the same Niners team. Right. And even though they're getting these guys healthy and and the market's going to reflect that, you're going to see the points get jacked up. They're just not scoring. They're not money like they used to be in the red zone and the defense, too. They're going to be taking on some capable offenses coming up. So I, I think there could be some nail biters down the stretch for them. Divisional races heat up at this time of the year, and we're heading into week 11. There's some that are wide open. There's some that are a little tighter, and you look at the futures odds for those divisional races. Is it worth playing the favorite, or is there value in taking one of the teams just behind them? I'm going to call out a couple division races here. You let me know if you're interested in anyone else other than the favorite. So the NFC East, of course, this is going to change. This is going to look a lot different on Friday morning. But the Eagles right now, minus 240, Commanders plus 195. Any interest in the Commanders? So for me, it's all a numbers play here. And if you think the commanders are alive on Thursday night football against the Eagles, it makes a world of sense to take them at plus $1.95 because it's actually a better price than what will be offered on the money line there. If you like the Philadelphia Eagles, you may want to wait a little bit here. But I think the commanders are going to be in the thick of things. I'm not ready to write them off yet. So I think they're worth a small nibble at that plus 195 price tag. All right, tied to the Thursday nighter. All right. Uh, the NFC North, the Lions picking up steam. is t- starting to run away with it. Minus 440, the Vikings plus 500, the Packers plus 1400. Any interest in those other two teams? We'll go full miles lane here, wave the white flag, whatever we want to call it. I think this division race <laughs> is over. It's the Lions or pass in my opinion, but if you really wanted to get frisky, I'd be much more inclined to take a flyer on the Packers than I would the mm-hmm. Vikings. I've just seen way too many kinks in the Vikings armor. And I think that's a team poised to come back to earth. Yeah, Pack coming off the bye here. Big game. Uh, NFC West, this is kind of a log jam as well, too. We just talked about the 49ers, plus 105. The Cardinals heating up, plus 140. The Rams, plus 900. And the Seahawks out there, plus 1,200. Any interest in anyone but the Niners? I mean, you're pretty much getting plus money with anyone here. I think there's actually interest in the two teams that are the long shots here. If you wanted to play a partial position on both the Seahawks and the Rams, I wouldn't really argue with people. I know people saw this Rams performance on Monday night against the Dolphins. It wasn't great. I still have some questions about the Cardinals and Niners. So I think this division is as wide open as any. A little bit surprised to see such long prices on the two bottom. All right. Thank you, Todd. Uh, We had a good Thursday nighter last week. Let's hope we get another good one here. We mentioned this. We've got Washington Commanders at the Philadelphia Eagles. What do you like in this game? Any analysis, any insights? You know, I wish I was bullish on a side or total here. I think uh, when you saw the buyback that we saw in this game, originally some books opened the commanders as four point dogs. Number got down to three. And so it wouldn't shock me if that game falls right on that three or four. If anything, I'll go to Terry McLaurin. I think he's got a path to have some success. I would look at his reception number over. I think he's going to be the primary target that Mm -hmm. Washington goes to to target this Eagles secondary. All right. I'm uh, going to say Washington doesn't put up a whole lot of points in this one. I'm going to go under their team total, 22 and a half. It's minus 104. I like what I'm seeing from the Eagles defense. And this Vic Fangio defense usually takes a while to get its legs under it. And I think they're starting to click right now. If we look at the Eagles, uh, on top in the last four weeks, an EPA allowed per play, uh, success rate allowed per play. And the one thing that they do great, they don't allow the home run play. Third lowest in terms of 20 plus passing yards allowed. That's something that Washington thrives against. It's Vic Fangio against a rookie quarterback on a short week on the road in the link nonetheless. So I think they also play a little keep away on offense and Park Daniels in that offense. So I like Washington under the team total 22 and a half. 
Time for some touchdown anytime props for week 11. Todd, I'll get started. Nick Chubb, plus 105 to score a touchdown here against the Saints. The Browns coming off the bye, and Chubb now going to be playing in his fourth game since returning from injury. He's going to be able to work off the rust, and he takes on a New Orleans defense that is just dreadful against the run. They've given up five rushing touchdowns in the last three games, the second most rushing, rushing touchdowns on the season. And since his return, Chubb getting all the goal line touches, getting all the goal line snaps. I like him to find the end zone and punch one in against New Orleans, plus 105. Well, I hope Nick Chubb has a big day, but more on that a little bit later. I'm going to go to a man that returns from IR, or at least we think he's going to return this week after a little <laughs> bit of a pump fake on Sunday Night Football oh. with Nico Collins. Anytime touchdown score at a price tag of plus 110. We saw this Houston Texans offense really bogged down in the second half against the Lions. And the one thing we've seen from the Cowboys, the secondary leaves a lot to be desired. I think C.J. Stroud is going to benefit immensely from having his primary target back in the fold. They'll target Nico early, they'll target him often, and they'll target him for a touchdown. Two minutes real time. That means our best bets for week 11. Todd, I'll get it going here. I'm going to go Kansas City plus two and a half. We all know the underdog stats with Mahomes since he'd taken over at QB1. But when I look at this matchup with this Bills team and this Chiefs team, I give the Chiefs not just the nod on offense and defense here. Um, you look at just how Buffalo's defense, they've won five straight games quietly hemorrhaging yardage here. This bend but don't break philosophy, let me tell you, it's playing with fire when you're playing against Patrick Mahomes. And then we look at the, the offense for the Bills. Injury concerns, that receiver. Coleman out. I like KC, plus two and a half. I think KC is a phenomenal teaser leg as well. I wouldn't be shocked if people key into that one. I'm going to go to a team that we talked about a little bit earlier in the Cleveland Browns. Look, this is a team that comes into the spot well-rested. It's a Jameis Winston revenge game of sorts. And we saw the Saints empty the tank for their interim head coach in the Riz last week. An emotional win against the Atlanta Falcons. What goes mm -hmm. up must come down. And I think this is a phenomenal spot to buy the Browns at the bottom of the market. They're better on both lines of scrimmage. And they'll be just fine in the Big Easy. I agree with that one, too. I'll go with a prop here. Going Justin Herbert over one and a half passing touchdowns. It's plus 110. Uh, meeting with Cincinnati just smells like a shootout. We've seen this total jump from 45 to 47, and Herbert's been throwing the ball a lot here over the last few weeks. Uh, he had only one touchdown pass against the Titans last week. He ran one in, but pretty comfortable win. However, he's had two in the two games prior. The Bengals, a terrible passing defense, giving up the six most passing touchdowns, and they gave up four on Thursday night. So I like Herbert to find the end zone with the pass, uh, uh, passing touchdowns on two. Got to be scary for the rest of the league once the Chargers start to get some real weapons around Herbert in that mm. passing game, how dynamic that group is going to look. I'm going to take it to another team coming off the bye in a divisional game, and that would be the Seattle Seahawks catching 6.5 in the Bay Area against the 49ers. I expect the Seahawks to be much healthier along the offensive line. They were close to getting some key contributors back heading into the bye. Didn't come to fruition. I think DK Metcalf with another week to heal up that knee. Even if he's out there in a limit capacity, provides a wrinkle that Seattle needs. And I don't link this 49ers team as being priced correctly. Give me the Seahawks. All right. That is the horn. That is another 600 seconds in the can. Big thank you to Todd. A big thank you to Dell. A big thank you to FanDuel Sportsbook. And, of course, a big thanks to you for tuning in and listening for another episode of the podcast. As always, we ask that you rate and review, like and subscribe, do all those actionable things. Hell, leave us a comment if you're feeling froggy. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, we appreciate that effort. Uh, Todd, any last words here before week 11? Uh, the biggest question that I have for you is who the Cowboys will draft in the <laughs> top five, most likely where they'll be drafting uh, this coming April, knowing that Dak Prescott is lost for the season. I just wonder if we're going to get the Cooper Rush experience or Trey Lance for the remainder of the campaign. I So I, I actually I, I took Dallas in the points after it jumped over the seven. I think there's better offense to come from Cooper Rush. And the defense, while they gave up a lot of points, looks a lot better. Maybe Deron Bland back. So that's, that's, yeah, my, it, that's, my, that's my words of wisdom for week 11. That dynamic changes quite a bit. It's amazing when you have a difference maker like Micah Parsons out there, mm -hmm. how much better it makes everybody on that stop unit. And I think to your point, this is a Cowboys team. We're going to get some value probably betting on down the stretch and maybe looking to make a case to go under some of their totals as yeah. well. As a rare, as a Cowboys fan, this is a rare spot for me to actually cheer for this team. So uh, <laughs> we will be back for Week 12 next Wednesday. Until then, best of luck with your bets. Hey, NFL fans! You can make every moment more this season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets, guaranteed, 
when you place your first $5 bet. Never waste a hunch at FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states or 18 plus and present in D.C. First online real money wager, only $5 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets will expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. Call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut or visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800 800- 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts or call 1 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY in New York. 